Hey guys, Mr. Bowman here. In this video, we've got two learning objectives. The first one in blue is we are learning to estimate given angles. And the second one in green, we are learning to identify angle types. So this video is giving a quick snapshot, quick introduction of angles. And then later on in the video series, we're going to get into lots of other more specific examples. So I suppose the first thing to think about is both of these learning objectives, whoop, heavily relies on that word angle or angles. And I suppose before we start, it's good to have a definition. Well, what exactly is an angle? And I'll try to demonstrate what that is. So an angle is a space between two intersecting lines and i've got three examples down there and if you have a look at example uh in the middle so this angle here it's going to be about 90 degrees and i'll show us how to estimate but that 90 degrees represents the space between the line down the bottom and the line going up and down the one on the left if we have a look the line going up and then the line going downwards the angle going all the way around that represents the space between those two lines and it actually has another angle between that space so hopefully that makes sense it's the amount of space between two intercepting lines so let's get rid of all that stuff next what we're going to do is we're going to work a bit more on about estimating angles so an angle is typically something that is between zero and 360 degrees and the way i like to think about my angles i'm going to draw it down the bottom is so let's stay well let's say our first line goes directly upwards like that so i've drawn an arrow on it just to demonstrate that it's the first line a 90 degree angle is one where they're at perfect looks a bit like an l and then if we go down again well that there then becomes a 180 degree angle and if we go across in the other direction that there becomes a 270 degree angle and then finally we can go all the way around to what is a 360 degree angle and i like to use this thing i call them quadrants quadrants and this is what I do to use, or what this is what I do to estimate angles. So using the one above, if an angle fits somewhere in this space here, we know that angle's got to be between zero and 90 degrees. If the angle, say, is going to pop out here, well, we know that's got to be between 90 and 180 degrees. If it pops out, say, over here, well, we know that's got to be between 180 and 200, uh, sorry, 180 and 270 degrees. And finally, if it goes all the way around, it pops out over there. Well, we know that's got to be between 270 and 360 degrees. So this idea of quadrants is a really good way to help estimate. So the quadrants could be between zero and 90, could be between 90 and 180, could be between 180 and 270, and it could be between 270 and 360. And I think this is a really good tool to help us estimate angles. So we're going to try to use this quadrant approach to the three examples that we have above. So let's change pink color. Let's get into orange. So let's estimate for the one in the middle. So for me, the one in the middle, we draw our quadrants. And straight away, it looks like that's just an L. So for me, I'll be estimating that angle there to be 90 degrees based on that so that one was relatively simple so let's have a go at the tricky one let's have a look at the one on the right so we draw our initial line we draw our line going across like this and what we know is we know it goes all the way around here so there's 90 degrees there's another 90 degrees there's another 90 degrees and it's gone a little bit more on that so i know it's at above 270 degrees because there's one two three quadrants 
plus a little bit more and maybe if I chop that again maybe that looks like it's a, about a third so that the third of that last 90 is going to be another 30 degrees so maybe that gap there is 30 degrees so combined would we'll have the 270 from the three quadrants plus the three uh, the 30 which means my estimate for that part would be 300 degrees so that's not a perfect estimate but it does seem pretty pretty reasonable and then finally we've got the one um, on the left so again let's draw our line so there's our line there's our quadrant so it looks like it does go through a whole quadrant so 0 to 90 so that's going to be at least 90 degrees and then it does shoot off over here um, so it doesn't get to 180 but if you have a look in this 90 degree quadrant those two angles on either side they it does look to be about half so it looks like it's split 90 to 80 180 and half so that's another 45 degrees so it's going to be 90 plus the extra 45 degrees which means my estimate for that portion would be about 35 degrees So hopefully that makes sense. So that's my method. That's how I go about estimating angles. And what I do is I use a bit of a quadrant approach. I draw a set of lines. So I draw it down, draw across, and I note that each of these relate to a 90 degree angle. And then I try to estimate the existing portion of any incomplete quadrants. So I'm going to clear that last diagram. And I'm going to get into our green learning objective now. So I think we've got a good idea of how to use quadrants to estimate angles. So that was our first learning objective. Let's have a look at the second one where we're learning to identify angle types. And I'm going to write a bit of a list here. So angles could be acute. They could be right. They could be obtuse, they could be a straight line, they could be reflex, and finally, they could be a full revolution. And again, we're going to be able to use the quadrant type approach just to demonstrate what each of these angles are. So I'm going to draw a quadrant on the very left here. I'll try and do a better job of the initial line. There we go. So there's our quadrants, and we're going to start off the one of the arrow that's our beginning point. So an acute angle is any angle that is between 0 and 90 degrees. So just as an example, an acute angle would be here, because we can see if we did our quadrant approach, that would lie somewhere between 0 and 90. So looking back at our bigger diagram, just get rid of all that nonsense. Looking back at our bigger diagram, I'll change pen color. An acute angle, so here is zero, and that goes all the way up to 90 over here. So an acute angle is anything that would sit within that area. So it could be this angle, Could be this angle, could even go further down there. So anything that sits in there is 90 degrees. A right angle, this is one that we're going to be familiar with. We can already see it on the screen. A right angle is an angle that is exactly 90 degrees. An obtuse angle, that is an angle between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. So if you were looking at our quadrant, so this is our original point. This is an angle that would spit out below 90, but it wouldn't all get all the way to that 180 mark. So anything splaying out of here, that would be something that we would consider to be an obtuse angle. A straight line, well, this is one where it carries on all the way down. And the angle going from here to here. Well, that would be exactly 100 
and 80 degrees. And we're now moving on a bit more. So let's get rid of some of this working just to make it clearer. So an angle that will be reflex, it's one where it goes all the way around to 180. And it can be anything between 180 degrees and 360 degrees. So a reflex angle, it could be as little as something just over 180. It could be well into the third quadrant. Could be just there, could be here, could be here, could be here. It could be anything that sits within those two quadrants. And finally, a full revolution. Well, most of us should know this already. That's 360 degrees, and that's an angle that goes all the way around and finishes where it starts. So a full revolution. And that actually touches base on every possible combination of our quadrants. We have our starting point. Anything up to the 90 degree line is acute. And then we get the right angles. And then we get any angle that could be obtuse. And then we get the straight line angle. Then we get any angle that could be a reflex angle. And then finally we finish up with a full revolution. So there was tons of information this, from this video. Hopefully you understood how to use quadrants to estimate angles and how the quadrants related to all the different angle types that we got listed, acute angles, right angles, obtuse angles, straight line angles, reflex angles, and full revolutions. Now it's really important at this step here, make sure you monitor your progress, make sure you're documenting these thoughts and these new concepts.